You're caught in a chaos of war. Your commanding officer, Lieutenant von Karsbruck, doesn't care about you or your men. Logistics officer Hanek says resupply is delayed and field cook Zelinsky is begging you to deal with the rats that ravage through whatever food he has left. How do you deal with all of this while not disappointing your soldiers? Well, you don't. At least not in the way you'd like to. But that's exactly what All Quiet in the Trenches is. Let me show you what it is all about. The game is split into three distinct parts. Let's call them scenes to make it easier. The first is really obvious, it's in the name, the trenches. It's always where you start the game. It's the area between war itself and the camp, where while your soldiers won't be shot at, they still have some pretty urgent and necessary tasks to do. We'll come back to this one later. Then you have the camp. This is the relaxed area. Who am I kidding? No, it's not. <laughs> There's no time to relax in war, but it is the one place where you find yourself a little off battle and theoretically you have more time to get your soldiers into fighting shape. Don't worry, that's also not happening. Finally, you have the combat scene, the battle. This is where you'll see your allies, other groups of German soldiers and also the enemies on the other side as French units. This is where really bad things might happen, so you really have to be careful and thoughtful of how you move and approach different situations. I'll go through it in more detail later. Now let's get back to the trenches. All Quiet in the Trenches is now out on Early Access as a PC Steam exclusive. Developed by Totally Not Aliens, I love that name for a studio by the way, it sits currently at very positive on Steam with 155 reviews which is a really good indicator. Nevertheless, the game isn't finished. As of the time of this video, you only play from 1915 to 1916. On the somewhat detailed roadmap, it is shown that by the time the game development is done, the last phase of the war will be until the 11th of November 1918. This means two years of conflict that are missing in the current version. There is a bunch of other new content mentioned in the roadmap like battles, soldiers, hospital, fringe village and gas updates. I'll leave both the roadmap and the game links below in the description for you to check it out. In the meantime, while you're down there, make sure to subscribe to the channel, plenty of other cool games like this one coming. The Trenches, the place where you get to see the despair of your soldiers every single turn. It's all about management in this game. Doesn't matter which scene it is, it all comes down to trying your best to make sure your soldiers and your commanding officer are, well, as happy as they can be. Every single turn you have projects where you can assign a set number of soldiers to. In a nutshell, this is really the gameplay loop. Decision making. In the trenches specifically, between combat and the map, you'll have to manage your rations and eventually have someone going back to camp to get more, so you don't starve. You need the food, but you also need ammunition. After all, this is war. Going back for ammo is another one. There might be the occasional message to the headquarters that needs to happen quickly. Maybe the French are advancing or maybe a patrol spotted something interesting. These are only some of the available projects that might pop up and again, the devs mentioned there will be more variety in the future with further updates. All these tasks are different. While some might be extremely tiring, like cutting barbed wire during the nighttime so you don't get shot, others might take a toll on morale. Remember when I said it's all about decision making? Yep, basically picking the right soldier for the right tasks at the right time to the best of your abilities. From the trenches, you can either advance and go to combat, or go back to camp. Let's check out the camp now. In our little base, you'll meet new characters. Yes, they are always the same ones and they're not randomly generated. This is unfortunate because I'd love to be able to customize or at least change the name of our soldiers, which the developers already stated it's probably not happening. I wish I could rename the troopers with my viewers and members' names only for them to perish under my poor management skills. I'm kidding, I would never let that happen. Anyway, you get to meet Nurse Elizabeth doing God's work, trying to save as many lives as possible and always, always complaining about not having enough resources and needing help. Your efforts will be limited and you can't save everyone in war, 
Therefore, think twice before offering a hand. I definitely do when I have one of my soldiers needing care. A bit hypocritical, I know, but it is what it is. We also have Madame La Roche, which appears as the figure representing the French village near the camp. Apparently, they don't like the sound of artillery throughout the night, but hey, shouldn't be long before someone invents sleeping earbuds, am I right? Currently, the interaction with the village is still very limited, so I'm expecting to have a few other projects popping up for them in the future. Now the two most important ones, Field Cook Zielinski and Logistics Officer Hennek. Yeah, the supply guys. Everyone has to eat. Zelinsky is the man you talk to, to either lower or even double the rations. He's also a pain in the ass, adding that pest control project complaining about rats running around and destroying our food. With Hanek, you can ask for different things like special items. A good bottle of wine to make someone's day in times of war sounds nice, doesn't it? Hanek is your guy. He's also the one with information on how long until the next resupply comes in. Of course, our commanding officer, Lieutenant von Karsbruck, is also here making sure you have the worst time of your life, adding even more work to what already seems way too much. Latrine duty or guarding captives are some of the tasks you should expect almost every single turn. It's also on the camp scene that you get to know your soldiers a little bit better. You have the option to talk with them to impose punishments, grant rewards, remember the bottle of wine? And of course, their personal issues, whatever is going on in their minds in these unhappy times. Each of your soldiers has different personality traits and skills. For instance, it might be a good option to use someone who is very quick to deliver a flash message back to headquarters. That is also the relationship between the characters and your leadership. Things might not always be great, and these not-so-great relationships can lead to some suboptimal events, let's leave it at that. The circumstances are also highly dynamic. There can be a heat wave or a case of the blue Monday rain. They can be hungry or the opposite, feeling better because they decided to double their rations. They can be tired up to the point where they can even collapse and end up in the field hospital. Trust me, you do not want to overwork them. Finally, the combat phase. To me personally, the best part of the game. If something, it does a great job of depicting the chaos that war is. Usually, you always have a primary objective, which can be either crossing a river to get to an adventure's point, or the absolute opposite, retreat. It can be also something different like searching for ammo and supplies while trying to duck shots and artillery volleys you always have a pretty good overview of your surroundings, both from the enemy and friendly sides. It's easy to see what different platoons are doing and what will be their next action for the turn to come. Depending on those, you can also adjust your own orders. If you spot a close friendly German group taking an offensive stance and going before a push, you might consider doing some suppressive fire on the enemies to make their life a little bit easier. Casualties of war do happen, and a lot of them. Your soldiers eventually will be injured to the point where you must stop and do first aid for them to survive. The same applies to enemies. There will be times where you can make an injured enemy a prisoner of war and escort them out of there. Again, it really all comes down to your choices. You can try to be the commanding officer the military wants you to be and earn prestige or go a bit against it by making sure your soldiers have everything they might need to, well, just survive. All Quiet in the Trenches is a great strategy war game. Sure, if you're the kind of player that is looking for more of a hands-on experience, this might be a little slow for you, but if you're the kind of player who loves simulation and management, this turn-based game will absolutely do it for you. I already recommend the game in its current early access state and believe it will be much better when all the announced roadmap is done. Are you looking for some more management simulation games that are like this, also based on past events of true history? Then watch my news tower video, I have a feeling it won't disappoint you. Don't forget to subscribe, thanks for watching, have a great day and I'll see you on my next video, bye bye.